Welcome back. I have a special guest here today, board certified naturopathic Dr. Jolene Munchman. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. It's great to be here. And I really want us to start out with your journey that kind of got you into natural wellness. So our story started in 2008. My husband came home from work one day and noticed that he had this random symptom. It actually, what it was, was he was smelling things that smelled really, really weird. Like they didn't smell what they're supposed to smell like. And this symptom continued to get worse and worse to where everything he was around, every food he ate, tasted differently and smelled differently. And it was, they were bad smells. He said, this tastes like ashes. This smells like gasoline. So we started with our, our family doctor first. And she did some blood work and decided she didn't know what to do to help him. She'd never really heard of this. And then we went to every specialist we could think of that might have a clue what caused this. So we went to an ENT doctor, a neurologist, an endocrinologist. We went to a specialist who is called a taste and smell specialist, thinking, great, we found our answer. Even he couldn't help us. He, he determined, yes, indeed, you are not smelling correctly, but I don't really know how to help you. And we were like, oh my goodness, I don't even know what to do now if a specialist can't help us. So as this progressed over a series of months, he started eating less and less and less because nothing tasted good. Nothing smelled good. Then his, um, he started dropping weight and he didn't have much weight to lose and um, his immune system started to be taxed. Then he caught an infection and that's what pushed him over the, the edge. And um, with that infection, he was no longer working. He was no longer eating. He just was really in a bad way. He was in pain. So um, one day I reached out to my church and I said, we just really need some prayer because we don't know what to do. We have Googled everything. We've gone to every doctor we can think of and nobody can help us. And after I reached out to them, um, one of the elders' wives contacted me, and she said, I have an appointment next week with an herbalist, and I want you to take your husband to that appointment. We had never heard of an herbalist before, but we were so desperate, we were willing to try anything. So we went to the herbalist a week later, and she told us that my husband was the sickest person she had ever seen. Yes, but she also gave us hope that he could get better. And that was really what we needed. We just needed some kind of hope, some kind of anybody who felt like they could help us. So she put us on a journey of cleaning up our diet. We went grass-fed, organic, free range, all of that. Um, we started getting um, like raw milk, things like that. And then he was taking all these herbs, which it's so interesting to me as I look back that that had never even crossed our minds as a, a direction to go. So um, anyway, over the course of a year, he slowly got better. Now, I will say about that same time, we had found another doctor who was in Washington, D.C., and he was another taste and smell specialist. So we ended up driving to Washington, D.C., and we saw him, and he did put him on a medication. The medication helped to reduce the symptoms while the herbalist was healing his body. So for us, we needed both pieces together. Um, so it took about nine months to, to a year for him to fully recover and get all of his taste and smell back to normal. <laughs> but um, during that time, he said, you need to learn how to do this. So it was after that, that I um, enrolled in natural health school and here I am. Wow. That is an incredible testimony. I relate to so many things you said. One of them is crossed our minds. It never crossed our minds. Mm -hmm. And when I put my autoimmune disease into remission, I wasn't trying to. I was doing things for allergies. I was doing things for oral health. And in doing that, it healed my autoimmune disease, which it never crossed my mind because they tell you you'll have this forever. Mm -hmm. And I, 
I love that you said you needed hope because that's kind of what we do in this podcast is even if a doctor says you'll never get better from this, let's just keep trying. Let's, Mm -hmm. let's, let's try some things. Oh, and it might take nine months. It might take a year. It actually took me five years to find the solution, but I never gave up on that. You know, I just kept trying things. I kept trying things and it was a lot of diet, uh, much like what you guys did, cleaned up the diet and things Mm -hmm. like that. Wow. Thank you so much for sharing that incredible story. And I love that it led to what you're doing now and that you know, you pursued that. That makes me so happy. What we're talking about today, which I probably should have said at the beginning, I apologize, listeners, <laughs> is emotional release. And this is something that we both studied in the program because I'm in the program that Jolene has completed. Mm-hmm. And the emotional release section was one of my very favorite sections. And I do something somewhat similar with yoga and essential oils. And I think that's why I was so drawn to it because our body really does hold on to these emotions and that can lead to the physical diseases that we're experiencing. So can you kind of just kind of tell us about emotional release to start? Sure. So um, each organ has an emotion that's tied to it. And for myself, I had an event happen that um, had to do more with betrayal and anger and bitterness. And as a result, after a couple of years, I then had a liver issue. Well, as it turns out, those are the emotions that are tied to the liver. And that's what really woke me up to, oh my goodness, I know that this liver issue happened because of the emotion that I had not only just experienced, but I actually like lived in and I kept reliving it and I couldn't seem to get out of it. So to me, it was trapped there. So emotional release, what I love about it is it's a technique that helps us determine what emotions are actually stuck in our body that are either contributing to pain or other health related issues. We can narrow it down, find the emotion, and then learn to release it from our bodies. It really is pretty fantastic. It's so mind blowing to me because the doctors took my spleen and it didn't really help. It helped a little bit. But I feel like if I had known about all these natural things before and been able to release those emotions and release the things that I had stored and probably reliving much like you, maybe I could have kept my spleen. I do need to let that go. And I do Uh like let that go pretty often because my my testimony is that's part of it, you know, and so I've been able to help a lot of people because of that. But when I look at the emotions I was holding and I look at the spleen, it was connected. Yes. It's crazy. It is. <laughs> and so what can our listeners do at home if they think, oh, okay, I think I probably am holding on to a little bitterness or whatever. How do they start? Well, I think recognizing that you are holding on to it is the first place. You know, that this is something that I keep reliving. I can't, I can't get it out of my head. There are, there are different things that you can do as far as like prayer and meditation. You can journal your emotions and get them down on paper. That's a way to at home kind of release that yourself is just write about it and put all your thoughts down on paper. And then I like to tell my clients to take that paper and burn it. Mm. That's just kind of symbolic of this is I'm done. I'm done worrying about this. I'm done feeling this. And um, so I like to do that. We also use um, things called Bach flowers that anyone can purchase and take at home based on whatever emotion they're feeling. Yes. And the the Bach flowers and also herbs and also essential oils, it can be a little bit overwhelming. And so that's why it's so great to have someone like Jolene that you can go to who can help you through this process. So if someone wanted to reach out to you specifically, they're like, okay, Jolene, I think I am holding on to emotions, but I just don't know how to do this by myself. How would you kind of walk them through this? Absolutely. Well, um, first of all, I, I would, after they contact me and say, hey, I need some help, I'd reach out and I would talk through what is going on. And then the technique that I use, it's called the emotion code. It is a technique that can be done virtually even just over the phone, because we all have vibrations that come through our voice. And I can pick up on those vibrations on the other end of the phone. From there, 
I can use my muscle testing technique to help determine what emotions do you have? Where are they in your body? Does that make sense to you? I always ask, does that make sense? Or can you think of something that might be tied to that? And once they recognize and move that thought from their subconscious mind to their conscious mind, like, oh yeah, I remember, then we can release it. Um, It was interesting. I did have a client who I just asked her, I said, do you have, she came to me for emotional release. And I said, well, do you have any pain anywhere? And she said, yes, both of my feet hurt. So I just went one foot at a time. And I said, okay, do you have a trapped emotion contributing to the pain in your left foot? And I found that she did. So then through the technique, I was able to narrow down the emotion and I narrowed down what age range I felt like that trapped emotion had happened for her. I said, I feel like this was this certain emotion between the ages of 20 and 25. And she said, that was when my foot started hurting. <laughs> so I was like blown away because how would I have known that? I didn't know that. So it, I, that just confirms for me that it does work. Wow. That's incredible. And so are people kind of doing like 30 minute sessions or are they usually about an hour? Um, I usually about 30 minutes. We get to a point where the body is done for that day. It's just, it's released as much as it's willing to release and we can't go any further. So then I like to take a break at least a week. And if they want to come back for a second session, we can do that. I'm finding the same in my body is six to eight emotions is about the max. My body's like, I'm done. We need to just take a pause. Mm -hmm. And I completely listen to my body once, once we do that. And I'm like, okay, body, we'll come back to this next week. Um, I've really enjoyed this emotion code process and we will put the book in the link so people can see that. But there are different people. There are people who just want to do it by themselves in their home. And I think the book would help them with that. And there there are people who really want this guidance and people who have done this before and kind of have that expertise. And that's why we're so happy to have Jolene here with us today. So please reach out to her if you, if this is resonating with you. And I think if there is a pain that you've been to the doctor before and just nothing is really helping, maybe kind of consider maybe this is an emotion that I'm holding on to and then let Jolene help you release it. That'd be great. I love that so much. So Mm -hmm. both of us have done this, you know, on ourselves and we've both seen the benefits of emotion code. And is there anything else that you really want to share with our listeners that you think either might help them kind of figure out if there is an emotion or is there anything else you want to share with them that they can try at home that will let them know, you know what, this is what it is, but I still need to contact Julie to help me through it. Mm -hmm. Well, I do like what you had said about, you know, you, you thinking through, you can, you can kind of, if you have tried the other things, if you've tried taking an ibuprofen and it didn't make the pain go away, or you've been to doctors or whatever, and it's just something is not right and it's not working. I would definitely consider investigating what emotion could be tied to that part of your body. And that might take, I don't know if a Google search alone would be enough, or if finding a a book that talks about emotions and how they are correlated to the body. Um, but there are there are out there if you can find them and then then you can kind of narrow down yourself if it is an emotion from there yes the emotion code book is a great resource for learning how to do it on your own um but definitely i would be more than happy to help anybody who feels like it even might be a possibility to try to walk through the steps and see what we can do to help them thank you so much for offering yourself to our listeners Thank you so much for sharing your story and your husband's story it was extremely powerful. Thank you for following your heart and learning more about natural wellness so that you can help people. I will put all of Jolene's contact in the show notes so that you can reach out to her. And thank you so much for listening and we will see you next time. Thank you, Jolene. Thank you, Jessica.